And right now it's my pleasure to welcome Her Excellency, Ms. Bithya Devi Bhandari, President of Nepal. Madam President, you have the floor. Mr. Chairperson, Nepal, Nepal is a least developed country comprised of the Himalayas, mountains, and the plains known as the Terai. We have been bearing the brunt of disproportionate impacts of climate change despite being a low carbon emitting country. Himalayan glaciers are melting. Snow-capped mountains are becoming dark and dull. The possibility of glacial lake outbursts is high, and the river basin system is adversely affected. Avalanches, floods, and landslides and droughts have become more erratic than ever before. There is a surge in soil erosion and landslides in the hills. The rural drinking water system has been disturbed because of the undesirable impacts on natural resources. We are compelled to spend significant amounts of our national income in addressing disaster-induced problems. The main productive land of Terai, the granary of Nepal, is frequently affected by floods and inundation. Even more severe is the impact on agricultural sectors. Such disasters and incidences have more direct bearing on women and indigenous people. We know the hardship of rural women who are compelled to spend hours to fetch water for household consumption. We feel as if we have been penalized for the mistakes we never made. I would like to reiterate that it is incumbent upon the international community to ensure that justice is done. We believe that the commitment to maintain the threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius as outlined in the recent IPCC special report, will further encourage the world community to traverse resolutely the path of low carbon emissions. We are a country that has been immensely contributing to controlling global warming. Himalayan ranges and high mountains, including Mount Everest, contribute to keeping air and water cool, refreshing, and pure. In fact, mountains and oceans form organic linkages to influence climate and weather patterns. These mountains melt slowly, yet continuously, to recharge and humidify the land. This water recharging system has a prime importance in controlling the temperature of the earth. The value of such natural phenomena should be realized by the high carbon emitting countries as well as the developed ones and ensure that the environment of mountainous countries is not exacerbated. 
Namuna, I was an alive special effort in the development of renewable energy and promotion of electric mobility. We are effortful in minimizing the vulnerability of climate change through the design and implementation of model projects as well as through measures such as national and local adaptation and mitigation plans of action. With a view to effectively implement the Paris Agreement, we are planning to review the policy and update nationally determined contributions to make them more relevant in the present context. A long-term strategy is being formulated for their implementation. We have already started the use of electric vehicles at the President's office, and we have a policy to extend extend this to other areas as well. The government of Nepal has initiated the President Chure conservation program with a view to implementing in an integrated way the environment conservation and livelihood programs in the Chure area popularly known as Shiwalik in Nepal. We believe that this project will contribute to the protection and conservation of the environment of not only the Chure area, but also the neighboring countries. We are confident that the support and cooperation of the international community will be there in mobilizing knowledge, skills, technology, and climate finance in our efforts to promote the study of Himalayan hydrological sciences, supporting sustainable mountain economy, pursuing economic and social development for shifting into renewable energy, employment generation, and ensuring all access of all Nepal to clean energy. We also believe that climate finance is critical for developing e-mobility, reducing vulnerability of women and the poor, improving public health, and the promotion of forests and natural systems in the form of carbon sinks. Nepal remains committed to make the project implementation climate-friendly and development efforts compatible with the Sustainable Development Goals. It is our collective responsibility to protect our own and that of the future generations' right to live in a clean and safe natural environment. Nepal is confident that COP24 will find pathways for the effective and faithful implementation of the Paris Accord. Finally, I hope that this conference will be able to, able to make significant contributions to the global campaign of environment protection and conservation. I would like to extend my best wishes for the success of this conference. I thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is my pleasure to welcome His Excellency, Mr. Ilir Meta, President of Albania. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in record time of ratification, binding parties to the Paris Agreement have jumped from the era of hope to the era of concrete implementation. This agreement, together with the Sustainable Development Agenda, provides a clear path forward to addressing climate change and sustainable development at a global scale. Albania, as a Mediterranean country, is quite vulnerable to changing climate trends with frequent extreme events impacting many regions, tourism, and energy sectors, but above all, the very life of our people. These occurrences have raised our awareness and our modest but firm response to proceed with swift implementation of the Paris Agreement. We have adapted the intended national determined contribution with a commitment to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 11.5%. Through periodic national communications, we have informed binding parties and the Albanian public on current trends of climate change and its consequences in Albania. We have built a strategy on climate change and its mitigation action plan 
loyal to commitments taken in the Paris Agreement and the NDC target. This strategy embodies three main components, reduction, adoption, and sustainable development. A national system keeping an inventory of greenhouse gas emissions and necessary measures to mitigation and adaptation will be soon functional following a new law on climate change aligned to the EU acquis. As an EU candidate country, Albania has merged energy and climate policies in an integrated national plan, also in line with the Western Balkans six roadmap for sustainable national and regional energy markets. We have expanded cross-border cooperation with countries of the region on environmental issues where EU's financial and capacity building assistance has been instrumental and to the direct benefit of local communities. While we fully endorse today's solidarity and just transition 